As fans, we always want every single signing that our favorite team does to be a sexy one. We want it to be the eye-popping one. We want it to be the one with the big name, free agent, oh, our team done got him. And that just is impossible because there is absolutely zero teams that are only made up of superstars from top to bottom of the team there are some teams that are really top heavy when it comes to superstars and comes to the name but you have to have depth players as well you have to have backup players as well and you have to have special teams players as well and this is exactly what this move is with the baltimore ravens because in breaking news that came out last night because edc he said giving them one person was nice but you know what i'm gonna double down tonight and this news came out last night that EDC, the Baltimore Ravens, have signed Chris Board. And you could actually call this them re-signing Chris Board because he's somebody that was with the Baltimore Ravens. Before, we're going to talk about what this means in just a couple of seconds. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. And let's run them likes up on the video. I appreciate y'all and let's get into it. So Chris Board, uh, he had been with the Baltimore Ravens before. And Chris Board, he's a linebacker. Um, but he was a special teams ace. We know the Baltimore Ravens in their special teams unit. They took a little dip this year. Took a little, little bit of a dip this year. Nothing too crazy, but they took a little bit of a dip. Uh, gave up a little more uh, yardage and returns than they would have liked to. I know he's so spoiled and so used to Justin Tucker kicking all these touchbacks and whatnot. And we see every time the Ravens score, you see the ref go like this because that means that, hey, Justin Tucker done hit a touchback after the Ravens uh, got their touchdown. But anyway, um, There'll be some times when they will give up a little more than they were comfortable with. And I'm sure John Harbaugh, especially being the special teams coach that he is, he's like, this is bothering me. Uh, I'm not feeling this. Oh, uh, we got to tighten up. And that's something that Chris Board can help with. Chris Board is a, um, a Swiss Army knife. That's what I would call him. He's a Swiss Army knife. He sort of reminds me of the linebacker version of Anthony Levine. We know Anthony Levine, a big time special teams guy, just like Chris Board. Um, he was somebody that. Anthony Levine, he was a he was a defensive back, so he played corner, he played safety, he played played slot. They would have him at linebacker sometimes. Sometimes they would line him up on a defensive line, just a little bit. But he was everywhere. So with Chris Board, inside linebacker, outside linebacker, line him up on a defensive line. You could you you could move him around, and he's somebody that is obviously familiar with a lot of the Baltimore Ravens and their staff, the coaching staff and whatnot. He got a deep amount of respect for them. They got a deep amount of respect for him. So it's all love there. So he'll walk right back in the building, and he'll be right back to where he picked up off it, where he dropped off it, excuse me. Um, so this is a solid signing. And again, not every single signing is going to be the home run hitter. Not every single signing is going to be, but you, you need depth. You need them. It's something that we talked about before. Something that y'all already know. Y'all already know this. That the Baltimore Ravens, all throughout this past season, they just continued to be commended on how good their depth was. Now with Chris Board, what he allows the Baltimore Ravens to do, it's like, all right, you're starting inside linebackers. Obviously, Roquan Smith. Then next to him, uh, you got, we assume that it's going to be Trent Simpson. But then still, you still got Malik Harrison. He could be next to him. But then you still got Chris. Bo so you got options. And just like what we talked about last night uh, when it came out that the Baltimore Ravens signed uh, or re-signed Arthur Millette, they brought him back. Um, that allows them more flexibility heading into the draft. So that's a beautiful thing right there. And the more flexibility that you can have in the draft so you don't get pigeonholed, uh, the better. And, and speaking about the draft, Mel Kuyper, he talked about uh, Ravens offensive line because, of course, that's still a big question for a lot of people right now. What are the Baltimore Ravens going to do with their offensive line? And he said that he feels like Andrew Voorhees, get it, the Baltimore Ravens getting him back is like an extra second or third round pick for them. Now, um, we do hope that it goes that way because I know that's how different players, different injuries, I believe. But different players, and um, but I hope it goes a lot better than David Ajabo, because you know when Ravens selected him in it with that second round pick a couple of years ago, I was thinking like, okay, red shirt year, okay, this is his second year though, oh yeah, we're gonna be ready, he's gonna be ready, but it just didn't work out yet, um, so yeah. 
We'll see what happens with that. I feel like with Andrew Voorhees, I think he certainly should and probably will be in the mix uh, for a spot on the offensive line. But in my opinion, with all the skill that he can have, with how great he can possibly be, I do still feel like you need to bring in competition, healthy competition, and you cannot put all your eggs into the Andrew Voorhees basket. But that's just my opinion because I feel like if Ravens just are like, you know, hey, we rolling with Andrew Voorhees. Okay, cool, but there and there's risk in any decision that you make as a GM, as a head coach, as whatever. There, there, there's a risk in any decision that you make. But I, I think it would be a smarter risk if you, you, you brought in some competition, some healthy competition on that offensive line. And I'm sure that they will uh, one way or another. Well, actually, both ways, through the draft and through free agency. I think they'll do a mix of both. Speaking of offensive line, Morgan Moses said he had surgery to report to repair a torn pec that he suffered. I think they said it was week four or week six. Well, I think it was week four. But he was dealing with injury for a long time last year. That's tough right there, man. Shout out to Morgan Moses. That's real right there. Like, that, that man, like... Played through a torn peck last year on the offensive line. Like, oof, man. That's like, shout out to him, though. Um, but EDC was like, hey, t -t torn peck or not, bye. You're going. Uh, Morgan Moses said he was actually, he went from, he, he was texting uh, Derrick Henry. Like, oh, yeah, welcome to the Ravens. Welcome to the Ravens. Oh, man, I got me uh, getting ready for the block for you and whatnot. Then, boom, out of there. Out of there. And, hey, that's the, the business of the NFL, man. You hear one day. Next day, boom, you shipped off to a completely different team. But that, that's, that's again, that's the business, man. And it's tough. And in business, a lot can change. Um, and a question that we had, because uh, I don't know the next time we're going to have an opportunity to do questions from subscribers. Because while a lot of y'all think Ravens ain't busy, but Ravens, they, they've been getting busy. Um, a lot can change uh, over the course of a year. Uh, over the course of a football season And it was looking like a lot was going to change in 2018 um, Because that year um, That was Joe Flacco was still the starting quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens They had drafted Lamar Jackson They had RG3 as well um, But John Harbaugh We had heard all these rumors about him being on the hot seat Like oh what's going on with John Harbaugh What's going to happen with John Harbaugh uh, We heard that We all read the article oh, The Ravens and John Harbaugh have agreed to a mutual parting of ways after this season um, and then, of course, on Jack Settlement and Marlon Humphrey's podcast, Punchline Podcast, they talked about that uh, RG, with RG3. They talked about it in depth. Um, and he said Harbaugh, they said Harbaugh addressed it. And he was like, hey, I'm, I'm riding with Lamar now. Uh, that's going to be our guy. So if I got to go down with Lamar, then that's what it's going to be. Uh, but anyway, um, a question from my guy, Michael. He said, hey, how's it going? Team, keep the cleaning. Uh, hope all is well with everybody uh, on this page, including you, man. Hoping you and the family are doing exceptionally well. Hey, things are going real good, Mike. I appreciate you. He said, I have a question for you. Uh, Lamar Jackson, 2018, saved our head coach who was on the hot seat. Think about this, or apathetically, do it, LOL. Uh, who would have been our head coach if our boy John Harbaugh got fired that year? And what would our team be uh, from then until now? Thanks for reading my question, and hope everybody has a great day. <sighs> That's tricky. That's very tricky because that's one of those things that we just will never know. Who would have been the head coach? No clue. But the team is possible that the the head coach that came in could have been better than John Harbaugh. It's possible that they could have done more with this football team than John Harbaugh has done. It's also possible that they could have been worse and they could have done even less. With this football team than John Harbaugh has done So it's just one of those things that we, we will never know Because it could have went a couple of different ways They could have been like, alright Could have came in and been like, alright Oh, okay, you got Lamar Jackson And maybe they might not have believed in Lamar Jackson Maybe they would have been like, you know what mm, We'll get rid of Flacco And we'll, we'll end up moving Lamar Jackson off, Move off of him too and they might have never given him a, uh, given him a real shot. They might have been like, you know what? No, that's, that's, that's not the guy for us. Or, hey, could have been somebody that's been like, oh, you know what? This Lamar guy, oh, yeah, yeah. I like him. Oh, yeah, we we, we really going to invest in him. We really going to go crazy with this guy because 
he got a lot of potential and, and i'm gonna do everything that i possibly can in every sort of way to tap into that not only tap into the potential but bring that potential all the way out so it's it's, it's a tough question man I, and i feel like it's a question that can never and will never truly be answered because we just don't know i mean um the thing that regular season has been fine for Harbaugh and the Ravens has just been the postseason that's that's been the big issue right there um but again this is just one of those things we will just never know because regular season oh they kill it in the regular season we ain't got no worries about regular season at all like they, they straight in the regular season that ain't no question but it's been the postseason where it's been uh the trickiest speaking of trickiest Jadavian Clowney and Jadavian Clowney well, I, I got a little worried. I almost got a little sad today because I, I did see a report come across that said uh, Jadavian Clowney said free agent Jadavian Clowney. Bro. Ravens free agent Jadavian Clowney because you got to put that Ravens in front of that now. But it said that um, he's getting ready to have his visit uh, with the Jets, I believe. Um, so with, with Jadavian Clowney, it's like, hey, <laughs> what's up, man? Like something got to give. Yeah, it says uh, it, free agent David Clowney, who tied his career high with nine and a half sacks this past season, is visiting the Jets today. The Jets have been pretty active. The first wave of free agency madness passed. So hopefully uh, that visit doesn't go too good. Yeah, I'm hating, man, straight up. Hopefully that visit doesn't go too good and Jadavian Clowney does not end up signing there with the Jets. But... Cause it's early, like training camp. Ain't we ain't close to training camp yet? That's when Jadavian Clowney signs, like, like after training camp. But you know he don't like doing training camp. So Ravens got a good shot, in my opinion. I think they got a good shot. The more visits Jadavian Clowney takes, I think their shot lessens. Like their uh, chances to bring him back, it lessens. But we will, uh, we'll see how things go with that. And, and speaking of Jadavian Clowney, um, somebody that reminded me of Jadavian Clowney was uh, Chase Young. And with Chase Young, he um he was somebody that a lot of, a lot of people had wondered about. Where is Chase Young going to go? What's going to happen with him? Um, but and, and I had tweeted it out a couple of days ago. Like, man, Chase Young, the, his market has been so quiet. Uh, and there were a lot of people who talked about his effort, and that's big. That, that that's that's really big. Effort is huge, especially when it's on film and people can like look look at it and see it. Uh, but Chase Young, he um. He signed with the Saints. He signed with New Orleans Saints. I know a lot of Ravens fans were thinking about him uh, just in case the Ravens did not re-sign Jadavian Clowney. But now Chase Young, he's with the Saints, but now he's having, like, surgery on – he having surgery on something. I forgot what he having surgery on. But I'm like, man, really, like, he signed a deal with the Saints, and then now he's going to have surgery. And, like, oh, man. It's, so it's crazy, man. He, he got the check, but they did say that um, – because I was thinking initially, like, oh, man. He done signed a deal with the Saints, and now he having surgery. Oh, he 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 done one up them. But they said that the Saints and a lot of teams NFL knew about he was gonna need the surgery. So I'm like, okay, all right, cool, that's cool. So he ain't okie doke nobody then. Um, now anyway, uh, last but certainly not least, we got a question from my guy Walter. He sent it to the wrong email, but I'm gonna give him this one time pass. And it's one time pass only. Don't ever send it to the wrong email again, please. But anyway, he said, "Engraven, congrats." To your new family edition Appreciate it Thank you uh, He said my question is Who are your favorite content makers For the Ravens on YouTube Oh ho, ho, ho. I got a lot man I got a lot It's like it's Everybody Um, My favorite I think the, the best Who The best person who does it By far And it's not even close it Ain't no offense to anybody else cause So many people do a phenomenal job But Noah My guy Noah from For the Flock he, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, woof, he's the best though, he's the best, um, shout out to my guy, uh, Kevin Ostriker from Locked On Ravens, that's my guy, man, uh, the kid, Gowie, I mean, he, he literally does everything though, so he don't just, do, he, he dibble in Ravens stuff a little bit, and he be active with the community and stuff, um, but yeah, uh, my guy, Jason from Huddle It Up Films, he be doing this thing, uh, shout out to Coach from Sip to Tally. Um, oh, Bobby and Sarah, man, they um they be crushing it too. Like they they be killing it. Shout out to to Glenn and James from Four and Sports Talk. Shout out to my guy Nitro. Shout out to um my guy Chris. Just joking. That's a, a dra big big draft guy right there, man. 
Um, the GM, he up and coming right now. Uh, that's Belanger, um, Flocking, Ravens. Uh, there's a... Uh, oh. My goodness, and, and I sometimes I hate lists like these because I always feel like I'm gonna leave somebody out, and I don't do it intentionally, but I, I know I'm gonna leave somebody out, but that's not my intention. Uh, shout out to, to, to Spencer Schultz and Jake Luke. Um, shout out to uh, man, who am I missing? I know, I know I'm missing somebody, I should just go down. My subscriptions uh, and that'll show. Oh, nitty gritty, nitty gritty sports talk. They they they've been uploading a lot uh, recently. So shout out to them. Um, who else? Uh, it's it's a lot, man. I um I ain't gonna sit here and just go down the whole list over and over. But it, it it's it's a lot. But I am uh, glad that us as Ravens fans, we have so many different people. To choose from We got a lot of different people to choose from When it comes to Oh not even choose from But we have a lot of options Well that's the same thing as choosing from But we got a lot of options when it comes to uh, Ravens content creation Everybody um, Puts their own spin on stuff Everybody uh, They they bring you something different They, they, they bring you Because again we all get All get the same information We all get the same exact information but it's just presented to you in a different way from each person. Uh, and that's the, the coolest part about it. Because you may listen to one person and be like, oh, whoa, okay, well, hmm, I really like this signing. Oh, that's a good one. Then you may listen to somebody else and be like, oof, I, hmm, maybe I don't like that signing so much anymore. But Because everybody got their different perspectives on how they see stuff. And that's, that's my favorite part about it um just being presented the same information in, in, in different ways and seeing how everybody feels about it because again there could be 20 people that make ravens videos and they could be oh yeah i'm, I'm all for this and there could be that one person that's like oh no i don't really like this one but they present their case and it's like oh okay they made some good points and whether you agree or disagree it's always fun to hear those points so that's what i love about um the, the the Ravens and the content creators with the Baltimore Ravens is that you you always got something new, uh, you always got something fresh, you always got something, 